Thank you, Iowa. Next selection, Columbus. From Russian Junior League, Kirill Marchenko. Columbus selected Kirill Marchenko from the Russian Junior Hockey League. It's the same. Everybody says right now it's a great day, and I can't believe he was there. But honestly, the uh, the second round pick, Marchenko, we had him in the first, so we would have taken. We would have even. It was close to being a consideration for the 18th pick. But if we would have had a later first, it would have been. Uh, it would have been right there for us. I'm very happy that uh, Columbus picked me, and this is like, probably one of the best days of my life. How would you describe uh, yourself as a player? I'm more of a skill guy. Uh, I like to play one-on-one. -on -one. However, the um, the coaching staff always tell me to, to shoot more, and uh, I'm trying to pay more attention to those words and try to shoot more. Archenko is a guy that's been anticipated around here for a while. Did he pass the eye test today? Yeah, he looks like a guy who's skated with men for a few years. He looked comfortable for that way. I hope to be here, you know, and. My most important goal is this, uh, just working in start season and uh, good form and uh, goal scores and uh, win. This is the beginning of the journey, really. I mean, the, the work starts today, you know, and, and patience. You know, we, we all laugh, patience, everyone's happy here and patient in July and August. But these guys, they're, they're young men and there's, there's a lot of growth, a lot of ups and downs that have to go through it. You know, I'm going to talk to them about a little bit what what that looks like to be a, a Blue Jacket, so they can understand from this day forward what, what they should be doing to prepare. Do you feel like you're you're ready to be an NHL player? Do you feel like your game is ready for the highest level? Or I think, yeah. yeah. But uh, this uh, need more work, you know, two, two miles and maybe three miles, and so hard work, and uh, I think, yeah. Gathering in, Gaunt, left circle into the slot, Marchenko fires, he scores! The blue line top of the circles, gathers to the forehand, stops at home, what a move! Off the draw, here comes Marchenko, rips and he scores! After being drafted years ago, finally comes over from Russia, winds up getting sent to the American Hockey League, doesn't say boo about it, goes down there, plays well, consummate teammate, fun guy, somebody everybody likes to be around. People are going to get chances. And the people that take advantage of those chances the most are going to be the people that are going to stay. Puck turned over, moving in, Ken Johnson in front, scores! First National Hockey League goal! Johnson feeds Marchenko! Pulls up, looks cross ice, perfect feed, there's a shot, scores! Christensen, shot, deflected and scores! He's got a passion to learn, passion for the game. He put the work in and, and, and done a real good job going. York. Marchenko, three goals, the last six games, he's got four and seven now. Brought in by Marchenko. Wrap around, try, and he scores! Marchenko wins that board battle, scores! Marchenko has a hat trick. Congratulations on your first career hat trick in the National Hockey League. Yes, and, yes thank you so much. It's, uh, for me, it's like a dream. Uh, it's, thank you for fans one more. Thank you, it's great. Calgary tonight, Edmonton on Wednesday, Vancouver on Friday, Seattle on Saturday. That's the way this trip shapes up for the Blue Jackets. Today is a new day. Today is going to be a big challenge. This game has a lot of meaning to it because Johnny Gaudreau is returning to Calgary for the first time since he opted to leave as an unrestricted free agent this past summer. So it's a homecoming for him. How will he be welcomed? I think we can all guess that without having experienced it yet. We can take our best guesses. We all think we know how it's gonna go.
it's going to be an experience. Not many people have had this experience, like players coming into a building that, one, it's Canadian City, two, uh, it's the first game back for Johnny. And we've had talks about it. And they're going to be very intense in booing for all the right reasons. <laughs> they are, because they wanted him. And free agency allows you to make decisions and some people are not happy about it. I told him, I said, I've been put on waivers and been traded a few times. Nobody said a word. <laughs> so nobody could care less. It could get intense, but it's all because they wanted you here, you know? And so there's something to be said for that. And, and you know, you, you're going to have to clear the noise in your head. And that's easier said than done because you are human. But he's not alone. If he's got a full team that are right behind him. And so this will be a, a game, like you said, I think to get attached to it, that shouldn't be a hard thing tonight. You understand when there's attention drawn to maybe one of your teammates and you want to make sure you, you know that he knows you got his back. And and I think th those are moments that you guys can, as a team and as an organization, you can rally behind and, and really, you know, dig in as a group. Go back. Thank you. Yep. Are you nervous? Have you thought about the reception? Do you anticipate there'll be uh, some moves for you? Yeah. Thinking about that? Yeah, no, I mean, they love their flames, so. Um, you know, I'm not on the Flames anymore, so I'm on the other team, so so I get it. Would it be a bit of a compliment if you get booed? Because they're not booing you if they didn't care, if they didn't miss you. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I guess some people told me to look at it that way, and, um, you know, uh, I look. I guess I look at it the other way. I don't know why, but I feel like, you know, they don't like me because I'm getting booed. So, um, But, you know, you look at it any way you want. Um, the bottom line is, you know, they... They want their team to win. They want the Flames to win, and I'm on the other team, so um, so I get it. Thanks, Johnny. Yeah. Thank you, Johnny. Yeah, thanks, guys. It's time to put on your jackets. Tonight, from the Scotiabank Saddle Dome in Calgary, Alberta, the National Hockey League presents your Columbus Blue Jackets and the Calgary Flames. Welcome to Blue Jackets Hockey. I'm Bob McElligan. This game is almost secondary to the big story, and that story is Johnny Gaudreau returns to Calgary he started his career here in the National Hockey League. He spent all of it here until this past summer when he opted to leave as an unrestricted free agent and join the Blue Jackets. Same night, Calgary. A lot of energy with Johnny Goodrow's return, of course. Absolutely. And he gets to start. I like it from Brad Larson. And the Boo Birds have already arrived in Calgary. And boy, are they excited. They are. Lindholm couldn't get to it. Johnny Gaudreau has the puck. You can tell. tell. Yeah, you'll be able to tell that all night. Oh, oh here's a turnover, and it's Johnny Gaudreau headed down the ice. He's got a semi breakaway. He shoots, and Lennar is able to make yeah, the save. The shot. But there is a penalty shot coming here. Oh, yeah. How appropriate is this? Johnny Gaudreau back in Calgary. Opportunity to boot for the fans, but hey, opportunity for Johnny Gaudreau here. Welcome back, Johnny. Try to go glove side. He just shot it wide. He always goes glove side. What <laughs> a miss! Had him high glove. Touch, touch. Go! Holy shnikes! What a blast! Come on! Come on! Throws in front to Majapani, broken up. Behind, Kadri shoots and scores! Keep going, huh? I'm gonna get one. Go! Control, what a pass! Shot, Martinko scores! Good goal, baby, eh? That's it, that's it. That's it, boys, huh? Nice job. Good fight, eh? Control back to Glidey, shot, score! As Corrali is back on the ice and he jumps right in on the play. Flames have the puck, they turn, they shoot and score. Andrew Mangiapane found it in the slot and he beats Corpusalo. Come on, huh? Let's go. Here comes Jenner. Two on one with Gaudreau. Jenner, 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 shot, yeah! score! Woo! Boom, Jenner with the twisted wrister to tie the game at three. And we're going to overtime in Johnny Gaudreau's return to Calgary. Hey, man on man, eh? Yeah. Stay on your guy. 
stop. Taken hey. down. Gaudreau with it now. Johnny Gaudreau. Pulled down. Nothing called. Hannafin, no stick. And here comes the Flames. Two on one. Dupe scores! Well, we played well. We grinded all the way to the end. Uh, uh, you know, Patty gets pretty good hook there in overtime, and they got a 2 on one So, uh, you know, it sucks, but I'm glad, uh, you know, I got to kind of come back and play, and uh, it, was, it was a real cool night. Chris and his team is going to take us through, you know, NHL 24, some of the new builds and what that's looking like. And, yeah, just feel free to ask us any questions, take a look around. Really exciting day for us today. The Columbus Blue Jackets are in town to visit EA Canada in uh, Burnaby, Vancouver. I mean, this place is awesome. I would be excited to come work here. It's a privilege to have them here and walk them through, give them a sneak peek at NHL 24, some things that uh, most people haven't seen yet. So it's, uh, it's an honor and a privilege for us to have them. So we're going to just go upstairs where there's a nice view of the stage and see what's happening. Do you know what they're shooting today? Uh, they're doing FIFA story mode. Does that fit my big head? Nope. Prior to the pandemic, teams would come in or individual players. Uh, this is a first. This is a first for us post-pandemic. We're hoping that uh, we can open our doors to more teams as well to give them a sneak peek at what we're working on. The tape lines sort of represent a virtual environment that they're acting in. So. It looks like a mess, but if you look at each color, it's sort of like one is a locker room and over here is like a stage. So do they just bury each other when they're doing like NFL, or like NHL hits? Open ice hits. <laughs> there were so many tapes in different colors. There was like specific, like a hallway or, or a locker room, right? Uh, designed it on the ground. Like they know what they're doing, obviously, but uh, it, was, it was fun to see how they are doing that. So I'm going to show you the whole pipeline from this is where it starts, um, actors on stage, and then once we record the data, what that data looks like, and then once we map it onto a character, all the way through. Wow. Um, so this is the main UFC um, NHL floor. Get a jersey up in here. <laughs> Motion capture, you saw the guy in the suit. What those little markers are doing, we just triangulate the data and figure out where the limbs are moving. Once I get the animation looking the, the way I want it, I bring it over into Frostbite. So this is our game engine. So that's basically motion capture to raw data to motion builder to Frostbite and then into the game. I have a question. Why, yeah. why the goal is there but not the helmet? It's an early build. And oh. he also has no legs. But we're going to fix that. OK. Yeah, we're, Maybe. I thought it's yeah. something new in your season. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he's just really brave. Yeah. Um, yeah. In our dev um, production team, this area is called gameplay. So what you guys are able to do on the ice, it's a gameplay team's job to make sure we can do that in the game. The peeker. Just hit the net. Just hit the net. Oh, oh yeah, that's peeker. That's peeker. Yeah, it's wide open. open. I only shoot block. I only shoot blocker. That's the only thing. That's your first problem. Um, we do player scanning, so really high-res player scanning. So this is our rig that's over in Capture. We actually have scanning technology now that will actually pick up the, the pores in your skin. So it's like that that detailed. So you might recognize this guy. He's one of, I think, the only guy on your team that we've actually scanned. This is probably four or five years yeah. old. This was back when he was playing on Winnipeg. So that's what it looks like uh, today in the game. So this is Michael. He's responsible for here we go. For each one of you, who wants to go? Well, we actually, we found out something that was very wrong with you. Was it the punching <laughs> power? Uh, no, it was, <laughs> it was uh, we, we had you set as fights rarely, which is kind of... No, <laughs> that's wrong. Incorrect. <laughs> New update probably You're a 77. No, it's fine. Alright. Good night, man. Nice to see you. Don't worry, you still got it. You can just delete the password for me. It's all good. Yeah, zero. Just delete, yeah. Someone's shooting, yeah. That's it. Well, did you guys want to sit on the couches and play a little bit? Sure. Let's do it. Let's go. Let's do it. This is amazing. Thank you, guys. Did you guys have an option to come, or how did that work? Yeah. Did they just say, hey, some people are going to be coming by, or? Well, like, if you want to go to CEA Sports, I was like, OK. 
like uh, I'm playing NHL every day. I was super excited for this experience uh, because I am a gamer and uh, I play uh, most of the games from EA Sports as well. Oh, oh come on. This was amazing, I love it. Because I really see the hard work, what the people do here and what they put in and uh, yeah, it was an amazing experience. I haven't played in a long time. It's crazy how much it literally is our rink. It is our ring. I think everything's so cool around here. It'd be cool to come in and work every day. You forgot it. No. Oh, wow. Selfish. Oh. <laughs> Selfish. I got Johnny on a breakaway. Oh no, I was wide open. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. They got a lot of uh, they got a lot of people working on this game, and a lot of things go behind and they try to make it as authentic as possible. And I believe they do a really good job at that. I oh, love it's that. It's me versus Mizey. <laughs> No. Yeah. <laughs> button, look at the Sally, look at the Sally. You're a button spammer, that's what you are. I just, I, I want to thank the Columbus Blue Jackets very much for uh, paying us a visit. No. Oh, oh Gus blocked that it. it. That was it right there. Good win. It's a privilege, it's an honor to have NHL players come through, see what we're working on, and just that partnership that we have. So I just want to thank them very much. Yes, of course. It's a good game. For those of you who don't know, we give furniture to families who need it. We partner with about 75 different agencies and charities here in the city. They refer families to us. They're no longer homeless. They're moving out of a shelter. That's the biggest reason. We see lots of veterans, lots of refugees, and we see a lot of kids. Uh, we see about 20 families a day, Monday through Thursday. Once they've chosen what they want, we load it up onto our trucks and we deliver it to them the same day. I just want to briefly thank you all for joining us and being here. We couldn't do everything that we do without a great community of support behind us. So thank you guys so much. Let me know when you need more legs. I'll run back and forth to get those for you. Perfect. Zip those through. It's all you, buddy. It's your leg. It's my leg. It's your leg. It means a lot. You know, they're a great team that's a great contributor to our community. To see them coming and giving back in this way, making a difference in the lives of the families in our community, it's, it's really special for us to be able to see it, be a part of this. Oh my gosh. This is like my more IKEA, but very IKEA. <laughs> but I'm having trouble. I'm gonna be honest. Question for you. You guys push these in? Camera right or anything? No, you screw this. No, screw, yeah. Because it, it's uh, like a hook. Is this one is up or down? And attach the bead. So like this. Yeah. To A. Here no, goes the B. I don't get it why they do it like that. Like this? Yeah, so it goes like that. Is it gonna fit? We need a hammer. Get some heat from the guys that actually know what I'm saying. Not a power tool guy. Not a power tool guy. Well, I can tell you for free that this thing is not fitting in here. I don't get it. I'm sorry, I can't do two things. Like, I can't talk to you. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> You know, about 300 families come through our doors every month. And as much as we get donated, we don't get enough, especially of these key items, dressers and bed frames and, 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 and tables. And so having teams like this come in, putting things together, allows us to make sure that every family gets exactly what they need. I don't mind the work. It's, uh, it spawns for a good cause as well. And yeah, I think we're all enjoying it so far. You gave us a little rundown of, of, of what this foundation does and what they do here, and it's it's pretty spectacular when you realize the numbers that they're working with on a on an annual basis. It's uh, and, and this is an incredible shop with you know lots of work being done, so it's really cool to be here. 
It's really a team building experience. You got to learn how to communicate. You got to learn how to read instructions and figure things out. Figure out, you know, and it's, it's something that's transferable to everybody. I'm sure it's going to help them out on the ice. Thank you so much for volunteering today. You got a lot done. It's a good looking table right there. I'd say everything that you worked on today will be in somebody's home uh, within the next two weeks. So it's an immediate impact that you're having, which is always cool. So thank you so much. We knew going into this trade deadline, we knew all year that there were three players that were going to be unrestricted free agents at the end of the season that the Blue Jackets would probably be looking to deal. Let's start with what the Blue Jackets have done. Gus Nyquist to the Minnesota Wild for a fifth round draft pick. Jonas Corposalo and Vladislav Gavrikov went to the Los Angeles Kings for a couple of draft picks, including a first round pick. And Jake Voracek's contract went to the Arizona Coyotes. So the Blue Jackets free up cap space and uh, all that stuff. The guys that left, they were very tough to see leave. And I know I'm not the only one that feels that way. I know many of you feel that way. Um, you lost your number one goalie. That's exactly what Jonas Corposalo was. He was playing as your number one goalie. You lost a uh, top defenseman in Vladislav Gavrikov. It's a busy time and everybody's trying to trying to figure out the uh, the present and the future and some teams obviously are in the playoffs and they're, they're thinking about the now much more than the uh, the teams that are on the outside looking in and they're thinking about the future more more than anything. How happy were you when you were able to find a deal for Vladislav Gavrikov and Jonas Korpisalo? Well, happy and sad. Two great uh, Blue Jackets that played here for a long time and were a big part of our team and, and well liked guys in the locker room and, and good, good people so those trades are hard to do but where we're at right now in the standings and how we're building our future and then becoming unrestricted free agents this summer those were necessary moves for us it wasn't easy it wasn't fun to watch but now the group that is here is the group that is going to be here for the remainder of the season and this is the group that they're going to go at it with each and every night